Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon to our honored guests. Welcome to webinar session of Higher Education Virtual Web Expo 2021. With me today is Mr. Ahmad Rizal, CEO and partner with MEG Educational Services, who will be presenting a topic on steps for visa application and other procedures to obtain entry into Malaysia. For any inquiries, you can type your questions in the chat provided and will be answered during the last 10 minutes of this session. Mr. Rizal? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, firstly, uh, my, my appreciation to MOE Brunei for allowing me this opportunity uh, to present to you, uh, to all of you actually, about the procedures of basically uh, entering into Malaysia. I believe uh, the news has already gone out uh, that uh, the Malaysian borders are now open for international students. And so today's talk would primarily revolve around um, sharing with you critical information uh, that basically you need to know if you are intending to come to Malaysia to further your education. All right, so I'll start off with my slides here. Allow me to just share my screen and here we go. Okay, here we go. Firstly, um, I represent a company called Education Malaysia Global Assist and uh, my partners in Brunei are MEG Educational Services. Uh, so what we essentially do, uh, we are Education Malaysia Specialists. We assist students, not only from Brunei, but all over the world, um, look for education options in Malaysia. Now, the one of the most very recent hot topic um, that a lot of people, a lot of students have been talking about is essentially Malaysian has opened up their borders for international students. So many we've received, I think over the last 30 days, despite the Chinese New Year festivities, we've received a lot, a lot of inquiries from a lot of students wanting to know how will it be possible for me to come over to Malaysia? So let's, let's begin here. Um, with the slides, all right, let's go. So firstly, there are SOPs in place, all right? Traditionally, if any international students that wanted to come over to Malaysia, there were already processes that you need to follow. But because unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 pandemic that has hit us since last year, um, there are now new additional processes that are needed for any international student to basically come in, into Malaysia. Okay, so first things first, first question that I get like a hundred questions of this, similar questions since, since the Malaysian government opened up uh, the borders for international students would be who can travel to Malaysia, all right? So if you see here on my slide, there are two categories, one category for new students, another category for existing students, but I like to say that there are actually altogether three categories. The third category is an absolutely new student to Malaysia. Sorry, I think I got disconnected. Hello, yep, sorry. I think my internet is a little bit uh, Are you all good to hear me now? Right. Okay, sorry about that. I think I got disconnected halfway. Yeah. So there are three categories, two on my screen, but I'll tell you about the third category shortly. The two categories, first one, new students. Who are new students? New students are people are students that who already have an EMGS approval letter, which means for the last for the last year in 2020, you have actually started some online programs with a university in Malaysia. All right. So you would have obtained something called an EMGS approval letter or you are a student that was very unfortunate that you have applied for everything to come to Malaysia in 2020 but when we closed all the borders in March 2020 all right you were trapped you were caught that you could not come to Malaysia right despite having something called an eval which is actually a electronic visa approval letter so if you have one or two of these documents you are categorized as what we call a new student and if you are in the second category here, which is an existing student, existing students are probably, you know, you are already one year in Malaysia, six months in Malaysia, which means you physically have actually been to Malaysia prior to the pandemic. 
and for whatever reason you had to return back to your home country and now you seek to come back to Malaysia to continue your education. So this is two categories, but there is a third category. The third category I mentioned earlier on just now was the absolutely new students. So what is the absolutely new students? Students who have only this year, if let's say this year you decided and say, okay, I'm ready to now apply to study in Malaysia, you, are, you fall into that category of absolutely new students, okay? That process is still the same as what I'm going to share with you, just that you need to do some initial, um, uh, what should I say, initial steps with your particular institution. Okay, which means things like getting an offer letter, getting approval uh, for Bruneians, especially you need to get approval from the BDNAC, the, your Brunei Dorosam National Accreditation Council, you know, to see whether the program or that university is, is actually approved by BDNAC before you could actually uh, make the necessary application. So those are those steps. I, well, I won't touch too much about that, but absolute new students need to go through that steps before coming to what I'm going to share um, with you all today itself. Now, Again, if you see at the slides here, who can travel to Malaysia? In fact, any nationality now can travel to Malaysia except people from the United Kingdom, unfortunately. So, so anyone from the UK can come to Malaysia, but anyone else in the whole world is accepted to come to Malaysia. Secondly, if you see at the bottom here of my slide, it says that dependent pass holders are unfortunately still not allowed. So who are dependent pass holders? For example, if you're going to do a master's program or you're going to do a PhD program, normally you tend to come with your family and you will apply something called a dependent pass for your spouse, okay, or for your children, right? But so unfortunately, this is currently not allowed. So the Malaysian government is only allowing students only to come into Malaysia at this point, okay? So let's, let's move on here. Uh, in terms of countries, I'm not, I'm not going to go through this country, but I know this is recorded, so I'm just putting it here. So you know that it's, it's almost all these countries are accepted, except the United Kingdom itself. Okay, all right, let's just move on here. Sorry about that. Um, now, let's go into the main gist of, of coming to Malaysia. All right, because we are now continue to be plagued by the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, so things like quarantine, things like screening, these are the new norm, okay? We have to accept that. So you have to put it in your mindset that should you decide today and say, hey, I'm going to come to Malaysia, all right? I've decided that I, I've been in Brunei for a year and I think it's, it's almost time for me to basically come over to Malaysia to continue my education or, con or to start my education itself, then you must have in mind that you need to undergo quarantine, okay? Now there are two types of quarantine. It's either a seven-day quarantine or a 10-day quarantine only, all right? And how do you differentiate between the seven day and the 10 day? That's very simple. When you arrive to Malaysia, there will be uh, ministry officials, there will be immigration officers that will be looking at some of your documents. Essentially, they'll be looking at your test screens, the test results that you've done back home in Brunei. And they will determine whether the, the, the test results are within their requirements. If they feel the test results that you have produced to them are not within their requirements, they will ask you to go for a 10 day quarantine. I will talk about this a little bit more as I go on. Uh, but if they feel that, okay, your test is valid, it's legitimate, it's credible, then yes, they will tell you, okay, seven days is good enough. If you come in without any tests, then it's guaranteed 10 days. Okay, so my, my best bet for you guys, if you don't want to be, to be quarantined for 10 days, don't, uh, you know, quickly do a test back home before coming to Malaysia. Okay. Now, uh, again, this, these are things that we, I normally advise. Uh, we already have students in quarantine uh, that, that are coming all, from, all the way from the Middle East itself. So if you're going to come to Malaysia for that quarantine, you'll be placed in hotels. I think you've, you've read uh, articles in the internet. You've seen uh, some, some people blogging on, on their social media platforms as well. If you have friends in Malaysia, uh, you will know that you are actually going to be placed in, in very comfortable uh, accommodations during quarantine. Nonetheless, these are things that I feel you should also prepare, okay? Because these, these are all very personal things. And can you imagine you are, you're going to be quarantined for the next seven to 10 days, right? So, so there could be certain personal items that could be, you know, that, that's only suited for you that may not be available at the quarantine center, especially things like medicine and supplements. 
Okay, these these are really very important. So these are the list of things. I'm not going to go through it, but I've just flagged it out here so that you guys, if you want, you can just, just screen grab this, or I think uh, the ministry itself uh, will, will have a recording of this later on. Okay, then let's move on. Quarantine, unfortunately, is not free. Okay, you have to pay for that quarantine. So, so if you could see here, this is the cost of the uh, quarantine, right? It's 150 ringgit a day. All right, so depending if it's going to be seven days, it's seven days. If it's going to be for 10 days, it's 10 days. But you see here, you, you probably ask me, um, why seven days and it's still 1,500? It should be 1,050, okay? The real reason is because Regardless of whether you're going to be for seven days or 10 days, you still need to pay the total lump sum of 10 days first. Okay? And if, let's say, after paying for 10 days, you arrive to Malaysia, the immigration officers or the Ministry of, Ministry of Health officers says, okay, you're only for seven days, complete that process, and they will refund the access to you. Okay? But they want you to pay the, the, the full 10 days first is because like I said earlier on in my previous slide, when you arrive, you it's going to they, they will be deciding whether it's going to be seven days or ten days. So they ask you to pay the maximum ten days first, and then later on, if it's seven days, they will give you the refund for it. And the balance here, two thousand six hundred, is just quarantine station operation fees. Okay, so the total, if you look here, is essentially about four thousand one hundred ringgit that you need to pay in advance. I will show you a little bit later on, on how to make these payments, but bear in mind, quarantine is important. Quarantine is not free, and you have to make these payments in advance. Okay, on top of that, there will be also uh, tests that you need to do, all right? You need to do all these screening tests, all right? So there will be two types of screening tests that will be done. So you have to pay again all this in advance as well. Okay, so pay all this in advance, and therefore, uh, when you arrive to Malaysia, you don't have to worry about money, you don't have to worry about changing money and so on, because you must understand, the minute you arrive, you know, you go through the documentation process, blah, 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 and then you go off straight, you go to your quarantine centers or your quarantine room. And during that session, your quarantine room, you know, maybe you may not have the time to, in fact, I don't think you have the time actually to go and find uh, a, a money changer to change money for you. So that is why the Malaysian government says make all this payment in advance before essentially coming over to Malaysia. Okay, so we'll move on now. Now, uh, a little bit about the eval. This is a little bit more to students who uh, um, um, who have already obtained an eval. Eval, like I mentioned to you earlier on, is an electronic visa approval letter. Okay, now a few things can happen. The first processes that you need to do is that you need to get your institution to submit a declaration of accommodation. This is a new document, okay? This, this, has, this document did not emerge before the COVID. It only emerged after the COVID and after the Malaysian government mentioned that it is possible now to come to Malaysia. So what is this declaration of accommodation? It's just you or your institution informing the immigration, informing the ministry where you will be staying. Okay, where you will be staying when you come to Malaysia and after you've been released from quarantine, where you will be staying. This is a very, very important declaration. Why? Because as you know, COVID is still out there. So if we want to do any form of contact tracing, it's easy for the ministry to look for you. So this declaration of accommodation is extremely important. Okay, extremely important. Uh, number two, the second document that that the, your institution that would need to submit on your behalf will be a declaration of commencement of online classes. Okay, online classes. So, so if you had in 2020, okay, started any online class in Malaysia, okay, you need to also fill up this declaration form to say that yes, you have started some programs. You started maybe in a March 2020 intake or in August 2020 intake, you know, and now after you've completed maybe one or two terms or even completed one year, you now decided to come over to Malaysia for year two. Okay, so this is also a very important declaration. And last but not least, for this part here, you must and always ensure that your passport has 18 months validity before arrival. This, 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 has been a, this has been an old written rule. I'm just repeating this. So these are the three, or oh, sorry, the first two things are new. All right, so you just bear this in mind. These are new things. 
these are things that your institution, regardless of which institution you have applied to, whether it's a public institution or a private institution, they should be guiding you through this process, all right? But I just want you to bear in mind that you need to have this, okay? Moving forward, then let's talk about pre-arrival processes. Pre-arrival, which means things that you need to do before you arrive to Malaysia, okay? So the first thing that I mentioned to you just now, just before my previous slide was the eval and about the travel declaration and about the online declaration, right? Those are the two things that you must work together with your institution. Number three would be you need to get your eval. Okay, they will work with you on the earlier process. And once that's ready, you will be presented something called an eval. And once the eval is ready, you will also need something called a travel authorization. You need to apply for a travel authorization with EMGS. So you just need to go to the EMGS website. All right. Uh, it's actually emgs.gov.my, but here is a longer link here, which says Visa, Education Malaysia, and so forth. You could also go to this site and go uh, and get something called a travel authorization. So if the travel authorization is complete, then only you move on. It looks something like that. And then only you move on to something called an LOU as well as a travel notice. All right, these are documents that you will need. And these documents can be obtained from the High Commission. In the case of Brunei, it will be the Malaysian High Com uh, itself. Okay, and so what are these documents? Just a glimpse, it will look something like that a letter of undertaking, indemnity, and so forth. So, so this will be something that you need, and the Malaysian mission will issue you something called a travel notice, okay? You need this travel notice. You need to get the LOU and indemnity form signed first. You need to get all this prepared, then only start thinking about buying a ticket. Now, this is the, always the biggest mistake all of students, you know, when they get very excited, they say, that, oh, it, I look at the system and everything is ready. I've got my visa. No, don't buy your tickets yet. Even though you got the travel authorization, even though you got this approved, all right, remember you still need to go to the Malaysian mission in Brunei itself and get this two, these two things sorted. And only after these two things that is being sorted, then only you could basically start looking at, sorry, start looking at trying to get your tickets. Okay, number three is not uh, it's not relevant for Bruneians. Bruneians don't need a single entry visa to come to Malaysia. So you could skip number three. Uh, number four, now coming to this, yes, you will need to go and you will need to undergo a um, COVID test or screening three days before departure to Malaysia. Okay, that's 72 hours. You need to factor in as well the the... the the time that it takes you to travel from Brunei to, to Malaysia, roughly about two hours, 20 minutes, right? So, so you need to exec, exactly count those hours, 72 hours, all right? So, so you need to plan out everything correctly. Make sure that you're within the bubble of 72 hours of you getting the test results and coming over to Malaysia itself, okay? So you need to do a test because remember I told you at the start, what determines whether you will go for a seven-day quarantine or a 10-day quarantine is actually this test itself okay all right then of course you need to make payments remember i showed you just now i need i told you that you need to make about four thousand plus ringgit malaysia to you know you need to make all these pre-payments in advance so you could do it here on all these links that i have here uh, the easiest would be my eg okay my eg.gov.my i'm sure if you watch some of the Malaysian TVs, you always see some of these ads that come out. So you could just, just go to my EG uh, and, and look for um, this uh, COVID test uh, quarantine payments, and then you can make the payments there. And lastly, you need to download, you need to download an app that is called My Sejahtera app. Okay, you can go to any Google Play Store or iOS app store. You just look for My Sejahtera. You need to download that app. Okay, that app is very important because it tracks all your movement in Malaysia. And if you don't, if you don't use this app while you are in Malaysia, you can be subject to penalties. You can be subject to fines. You know, so again, these are very, very, very important. Okay, now there are times that a lot of students will ask me, so what is the difference between the two tests that I mentioned? Actually, 
just a trivia just to share with you what is the difference between the two tests if you if you might know i took this from from one of the private hospitals in malaysia so this is the test this is the more expensive test uh, more most people tend to tell you that this would be a slightly more accurate test versus the rapid test kit okay just for you for your understanding all right now let's move on so after that is all sorted then only start looking at buying your tickets okay after that whole lengthy process is done then only look at buying your tickets now because why because they could be delays they could be delays in one of the earlier processes that i've mentioned right so if you bought your ticket and then there's a delay in one of the process then you probably would have wasted time and money to probably change that particular ticket again right and because of covid you know there are not that many flights that will be flying so so ticket prices could be a little bit expensive as well. so you've got to be very careful with this now second thing that is really very important you can only enter malaysia via klia or klia2 you guys are in brunei right so you're probably thinking hey can i cross through the borders at limbang and all this and come into malaysia uh no no you can't do that okay and at this point i did check with some of the uh universities that are located in sabah and sarawak all right at this point of time they are also not accepting international students yet okay uh, i i did speak to swinburne and they said that no they still prefer their students international students to to continue an online option but the ones that is accepting international students is in the is in the peninsula of malaysia where kuala lumpur slang also so again if you're buying a ticket and you look at the entry point can only be in these two airports which are just side by side each other okay because again that you could probably think that i fly to singapore and from singapore i cross the crossway into malaysia no please don't do that okay you can fly to singapore but from singapore you take another flight in into klia or klia2 okay yeah let me see there's some chats here yeah okay uh, I will come to uh, the chat questions uh, uh, shortly. Okay, yeah. So, so again, destination on where you are going to arrive into Malaysia is extremely important. And now let's just very quick on move on to the post arrival process for students. Okay, so the post arrivals is is very straightforward. It's you no know, once once you are under the the Malaysian government's care, it's just a very straightforward process. You know, once you arrive, you show your tests. I mentioned to you that just now. Um, during quarantine, also you will be tested. Okay, so these are the test times. You know, if you're under a seven-day quarantine, on the fifth day you will be tested already. If you're on the on a ten-day quarantine, on the eighth day you will be tested. And once you know, once everything is clear, once everything is good, you get a clean bill of health. They tell you, yes, you are you are safe, you are free, you can go, you know, be free and enter into Malaysia officially. They will give you something uh, very important, which is called the release order. The release order. Now, this is another document that it is a very important document that you should have with you all the time. Okay, because if someone stops you, you know, they will ask you, you're, you're not a Malaysian? No. Okay, you're a foreigner? Yes. Okay, so have you undergone a quarantine? You will tell him, yes, I have. And then he will ask you, can you show me proof that you've gone through the quarantine? So this is actually the proof that you've gone through quarantine. And for you to basically enter the university as well, okay, you will need to show that order, that release order. And for you to enter the accommodation of the university, you will still need to show that release order. So that release order is a, a very important document. Please have it with you. If the institution wants the original copy, at least have a photocopy version or a, a PDF version in your phone or something, at least have a copy so that people know and you can show it on demand. When someone asks it from you, you'll be able to show it to them. Okay. And once you are in Malaysia officially, uh, because I'm currently in Malaysia as well, you must follow the necessary uh, regulations that stipulated by the Malaysian government. So as it is, if you're reading the news, you know that currently uh, in certain states, like states like in Selangor, states like in Kuala Lumpur, we are now undergoing still a movement control order. Okay, but some other states like Pahang, some other states like Kedah, uh, as I think Sabah, if I'm not mistaken, these states are now under a conditional movement control order. So there are some differences in terms of what you can do and what you can't do. 
All right? But nonetheless, you need to adhere and observe to all these rules when you are in Malaysia already. Okay? Now, okay, let's let's go on to um, some interesting bits, some FAQs. I'm sure uh, by the time I answer this, maybe the last 10 minutes, there will be no more questions, okay? <laughs> because I prepared this in advance so that, you know, it's easy and everyone will grab everything. Now, first, first, first question is, what is the final payment for all this procedure? You know, and must I pay it in advance before I travel? I think I showed you just now the final uh, the payments that you need. It's roughly between four to 5,000 ringgit. And yes, you have to pay that in advance. So I'm just going to quickly tell you that I've answered this. I've answered this. And will the money be refunded? Yes, the money will be refunded if there's any excess. Now, this is a very popular question. If I have been vaccinated, okay? In Meme, in Brunei, you you somehow managed to get the, the vaccine and you got vaccinated. And then you decide to come to Malaysia. So should I do the quarantine? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Regardless of whether you have the vaccine in your body, you have the antibodies and so forth, you still need to undergo the quarantine. Okay? Can my parents come with me? I think I've answered that in the start. No, they can't come. Uh, they can only students are allowed at this point. Can we decide on the hotel of the quarantine? A lot of people tend to ask me this question. You know, is it possible we decide where we want to stay? No, we, we, uh, it's all, um, how to say, delegated or apportioned or segmented or assigned to you by the ministry itself. Okay, but like I said, you now just go on to the internet, you will see that actually we, uh, more and more people are giving very, very extremely good reviews. Uh, they're staying in very good hotels, actually, three to four star hotels. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so I think, you know, just, just pray for the best that you'll get one of the best hotels in, in Malaysia itself. Um, what are the bases deciding between seven, 10 days quarantine? I think I've answered that early on. It all depends on, uh, at, upon entry, when you arrive, you know, what do they feel uh, about your current test that you have, you have done back home in your home country? Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I accidentally clicked this. Now, okay. Here, how to buy foods during quarantine? Uh, how do you buy food? You know, uh, I think it's 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 a, a very important question. During the quarantine, you'll be given three meals. Okay, your hundred and fifty. Remember, just now I mentioned one hundred and fifty ringgit. That gives you three meals a day. Three meals. All right. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But yes, when you are in quarantine, when you're alone, you know. <laughs> You know, you're probably on Netflix, you know, or you're probably reading your books or something, and, and you tend to get hungry. So download apps. We have grab food, you know, all, all this. So so you can, you could use apps for food delivery. We have Food Panda. You know, we, we have quite a number of all these apps, uh, food delivery apps that's ongoing. So you may use these apps uh, to supplement uh, meals, uh, in between meals that's already been provided for you. Okay? But um, I'm not sure how long this would last. Okay, just, just bear in mind that the last delivery time is, I think, 5.30 or 6 p.m. I think it's 5.30. So, so after 5.30 every day, you know, you, you cannot make any, any more orders because if the, even the delivery guy comes to your quarantine center or your hotel, all right, they will not be able to deliver the food up to your room. Okay, so just bear in mind that the last order should arrive to you by about 5.30 um, every day. Okay, uh, what are the things I should, uh, is there any curfew? What is the curfew to order? Uh, yeah, curfew to order, like I mentioned, 5.30 is the last. Um, what are things to, to pack during quarantine? I mentioned that earlier. I'm just repeating this again because like I said, we have seen some students, you know, they struggle throughout the seven or 10 days because maybe they forget uh, a, a specific uh, medication, you know, for their rash, you know, for their allergies and so forth. So please, 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 I, I really cannot emphasize enough about getting all these things uh, you know, proper. You may also pack Maggie if you want. Okay, you you may you may pack Maggie. You may pack some biscuits, cookies, whatever you want. Also, if you feel that that's comfortable, maybe you're not too you know you're not too sure for the first one two days what is the food by the hotel. You know, maybe you you're not comfortable with curry. You're not comfort comfortable with certain type of food. So maybe you pack some Maggie first. You know, then get used to the food and then get used to your know, using the apps. Then only you know, then you'll be more comfortable. Then all right. Uh, will you be able to buy a Malaysian SIM card? The answer is yes. Actually, when you arrive at the KLA airport, uh, there is always all these shops, mobile phone shops, 
uh, along the way before you even reach the immigration counter. Um, there will be some shops that will be there. Uh, you could purchase a mobile SIM card uh, there, there and then itself. Okay. Um, yeah, if let's say assume you come with your friends, okay, three or four of you decide to come together, come on the same day, you know, and then you ask the quarantine officer, can we three friends be together in the same room? No. No. Okay, you can't do that, all right? Quarantine means you alone in that room. You can't even come out and you know just knock onto your friend's door next door and just say, "Hey, can I have, can I, can I, you know, borrow, uh, you know, your your charger or all that?" No, you can't do that. You can't do that. If you do that, they may find you and they may extend your quarantine period. So when you are supposed to be in the room for the next seven to ten days, you really have to be in that room for the next seven to ten days. Ah, huh, very, 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 very legitimate question. Is it really safe to be in Malaysia now? Well, um, I really don't have a definite answer for this. Uh, me being a Malaysian and I'm currently in Malaysia, um, I, I think it's it's a mixed emotions. Um, it's the same as wherever you go throughout the world. If you are negligent or you are complacent, all right, and you don't follow SOPs, then anywhere you go, is dangerous, you know. But if you do really follow the SOPs, you know, you try to limit your movements, you know, you 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 do a lot of social distancing and so forth, then yes, it's it's actually perfectly fine uh, to be in Malaysia at this point. Otherwise, our Malaysian government also wouldn't allow internationals to come in. Okay, um, if um, if there are mostly online classes, uh, can I just do it from? Uh, Brunei itself. Okay. Um, while I pre this was prepared a month ago, there was a circular that has been uh, that was circulated just a couple of days ago, just after Chinese New Year holiday, uh, informing that uh, by March 2020, 2021, uh, Malaysian university campuses should be open for students, physical classes. Right, so so that means that in the coming months, in in the next two, three, four months, most of the Malaysian universities will start to phase out online learning to try to go back to the normal. Okay, so one way or another, whether you don't want to come now, you're right, but you must pop, you know, must you must have the mindset that you know in the coming months, you know, there will be a possibility that the university may just say, hey, we're not going to continue and you need to physically make a, a trip over here. Now, if, that's, if, that's, if that does happen, and should you still not feel comfortable to come to Malaysia, it's perfectly fine. Just request for deferment. Just defer your current semester, defer your current uh, term to the next term, right? And I, I can assure you, most of the Malaysian universities, in fact, all will be very welcoming to assist you uh, well, with that because it's always health over everything else, okay? Um, yeah, I think this is about the same as what I just answered above, right? Because of the new ruling, uh, you just need to be prepared to come to, over to Malaysia. Uh, why should I come? Um, why should we do an accommodation booking without knowing when we come? Remember, there was an earlier thing that I mentioned at the start that says that you need to have a declaration of accommodation where you need to tell the ministry, you need to tell them where you will stay before arriving to Malaysia. Now, the real purpose of that is just for contact tracing. Should anything happen, you know, the Malaysian government can also notify you. For example, all right, you, you, you notify the ministry or the authorities that you're staying in this particular apartment, okay? And then suddenly, you know, an unfortunate incident happened and there was an outbreak of COVID-19 in that particular building. The ministry is able to notify you because they know that you are in that building, you see? So, so it works both ways, you know? Don't think that the Malaysian government is just trying to check where, you know, trying to spy on your privacy. No, it's actually basically for your safety as well, so that if there's any information that needs to be sent over to you and they can't reach you through digital efforts, you know, they can come physically and look for you and tell you, hey, it's dangerous, let's relocate you somewhere else and so forth, okay? All right, so, I'm not going to go through this. This is this is meant to confuse any of you, right? But it's just trying to say that there are different different stages. 
uh, you can go to my partners, MEG. Uh, they are very, very well versed with all these policies as well. And they can guide you through step by step. So I think after this, this little webinar that I'm conducting here, uh, should you have additional information, please, please, please go to them. You know, they, they will be able to give you relevant and updated information because I'm also giving and I'm also sharing uh, as, as and when I get new information from the ministry uh, to all my partners as well. So, so they will be also a very, very reliable source uh, and they can also guide you with the necessary processes uh, that you need to do back home in Brunei as well as uh, what you need to do here in Malaysia. Now, again, it's, it's the new normal, all right? So I, I, think, I think, you know, we just need to have the mindset that things will be in the new normal and we just have to have the mindset that it will never, okay? It will never go back to the way it was because it is basically still uh, under the COVID-19 pandemic itself, okay? That's right, so uh, I'm just not going to go too much. There'll be some group of Malaysian universities that will be coming uh, next month in March. Uh, it's a virtual... Uh, fair as well. So this is just some of the basic information for all of you. So with that, uh, I think I, I, I come to an end of my, my webinar. I think I've made it under 30 minutes. So we have now a couple of minutes to, to essentially answer any questions, uh, if any of you have any questions for me. Okay, so now uh, it's, a, uh, it's time for your question and answer session. Right. So let's read some of the questions here. Sure. Um, all right, so the first question is, if the condition is not permissible for Bruneian to start their study in the first semester this year, do you allow online learning for Brunei? How about the visa? Okay, very good question. Uh, yes, uh, if it's not permissible, maybe uh, again within Brunei itself, Bruneian government will have their own position as well. They may say, no, I don't want Bruneians uh, to leave the country yet because I feel whether it's in Malaysia or anywhere in the world that it could still be a little bit uh, risky to do that, then yes, you can actually start an online option with the university itself for at least one semester. That's definitely possible. Okay, and for the visa, you don't need a visa. You just need something called an EMGS approval letter. The EMGS approval letter is a, a consent so that you can start a online program in Malaysia itself. Okay. So for the next question, for existing students coming back to Malaysia, can quarantine be done at their own place? Um, there were some discussions over this issue. Unfortunately, no, not at this point. Uh, you will still undergo the quarantine procedures that I've just mentioned to you just now. Okay, so for the last question of the day, okay, for this sure. session, Okay, they were just wondering, can existing Bruneian student travel to Malaysia already? Uh, well, I think that's, that's the whole idea of this, this talk here, uh, is to share with you the uh, processes, the, the guidelines that you need to undertake before arriving to Malaysia. But I'm going to, to qualify this statement is that you still need to get consent from the uh, Bruneian government. Okay, you still need to get consent from uh, the Bruneian authorities uh, to be able to leave Brunei itself. All right. So, so my best bet would be go and speak to to your ministry as well, your ministry of, of education. You know, uh, they will give you the the proper guidelines if should you want to leave Brunei. And then, if they give you the consent, then it will be all the things that I've just mentioned just now uh, during my thirty minutes of talk. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yuzo. So, yes. um, yeah, so we will be having another session, right, on Sunday, the D7. On Sunday, that's right. Yeah. So is it going to be the same topic or is it a new topic to be actually making sure that people will get much more interest, more information sure. for this webinar session? Um, it's, it's, I, I, was, I was actually informed that it will be the same topic, um, but because things are so fluid now in Malaysia, you know, policies keep changing uh, and, and we just came back from the Chinese New Year holiday. So, so maybe there could be some new changes, policy changes by then. And then I will update okay. them here during my presentation or my webinar as well. All right, so thank you very much, Mr. Rizal. Okay. okay, so for everyone who actually uh, wanted to know much more or missed out something today, so you can actually 
um, be with us on the day seven, which is on Sunday, the 21st February 2021. Okay, we will be having the same guest, okay, and much more probably additional information about MEG. All right, okay, so thank you very much. Um, okay, thank Mr. you, Rizal, everyone. Thank you. All right, Please thank stay you safe. very Take much care. for attending. Yes. Right. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending the webinar session 2021 with us. So we hope that it actually benefits all of you. And for the next session, that will will be pre, um, will be at 3 p.m. today, will be presented by Cybersecurity. Bye for now. Okay. Take care.